So we did this Wi-Fi project a few months ago and I wanted to do a follow-up video. I didn't want to do the video right after we did the project. I wanted to do the video after it's had some load put on it, after it's had a lot of users put on it. So a few months and plenty of usage has gone by. Client is really happy. We're happy with the results of this project. Everything's working great. So let's talk a little about the planning and why putting Wi-Fi in a bowling alley requires a little more than your average planning. Well, this is a bowling alley with about 90 lanes in it, and I've this is an aerial view of just how big this building is. It's quite large. Matter of fact, one of the challenges first we had to do was plan a second IDF room to get all the connectivity. Because the problem with the running a cable in a building like this is the building length is about 600 feet long. Um, and once you start adding the turns into the wire, well, wire only has a range of about 330 feet before you have a problem or 100 meters. So we had to have, and they already had, an IDF room right here, kind of in the front of the building. That's where the fiber line comes in that runs this. And this is where the other end of the building is. There's party rooms and things like that all over the place. So we put in a second IDF room. It's roughly right in here. How did we do some of the planning and a little bit about this bowling alley? So this bowling alley is been around since the 60s. So that creates a challenge because it wasn't built all at one time. It was built over time. And it's quite large, but it's also a series of buildings essentially all tied together. That presents some really interesting challenges. And this is one of the reasons that when it comes to like software uh, that magically will tell me where to put the saturation, ah, you can't rely on it. You kind of have to go on site and do that. So that's what we did. We came on site. And we walk around the bowling alley. We actually were there also when there weren't users. This is actually some post video uh, photos. I didn't take many photos when we were first starting it. But what this is giving you an idea is we brought these unifies to the client. We pre-programmed them. This was the sales pitch. We pre-programmed some of them. They were having trouble with the Wi-Fi they had. We put them, put them out on the counters, plugged them in, hooked up to their existing network, and seen the range, seen where some of the dead sparks are. That gave us a better idea. You can get a general idea, even using the Unify software to create some heat maps to try to determine where you think they're going to be. You can also uh, look at different areas because the fire marshal does some of the work for you. They'll put a notice of just how many people and the capacity of each of these areas. You can assume, depending on the type of job it is, but for this, because they wanted a guest network was the an important aspect of this bowling alley, that there won't be more people in those areas than the fire marshal will allow. So if you plan based at least on that, and at least each person has a phone, and maybe they have a tablet, depending on the usage. But I did notice, because we stopped by when they were busy, there's a lot of kids there that have tablets. That seems to be quite the thing, and they want to watch Netflix. So the guest network was something that the customers really wanted, and this is something the bowling alley contracted us to provide. So once we kind of had an idea that they have a lot of people there, we went to work on the, on the building out the network. And what we went with was and this is actually a little post here. There's about uh, 700 people that get on there when they're busy. So it's about 700 people on network. They told us, and we planned in capacity wise for even more than that. But it seems to be about 700 people on there on some of the bigger times when they have a lot of people coming in. The devices we chose to use. Mostly in all the big areas, we went to Unify AP HDs. Those HDs, and I'll actually pull this up in this area here. We use, for example, this is like the middle of the building and we have right where it's a snack bar, you can see where we installed one of the Unify APHDs. This has no problem covering this entire area. So because it's a very open area, there's not anything blocking it, so the Wi-Fi saturates really well. And the snack bar one, we'll show you here. Uh, where's that snack bar? 244 guests on there, no problems at all. And this was just uh, the other day. So they had an event, so I figured it's a good time to talk about this job because you can get an idea of just how many people at once are on there. So we have 215 there, 244, 206, 121. And over at this place here, we had, what, 76 at the uh, arena bar. So that kind of builds out the density. Now, for the smaller rooms, or like the party rooms, they call it the Continental Room, the Cosmic Party Room, those don't even have a capacity over 100 people that you could get into those rooms. Some of them only can fit about 40 people. So we just went with the standard uh, Unify APC LRs for there. So guest networks built out in there. We know that they're solid. Now, 
Some of these were recently restarted, in case you're wondering, because we just pushed some firmware updates. Um, so there's not a total data on the ones that we just pushed new firmware updates to. Uh, the data total is a little bit off also because we reset our controller. For anyone wondering, uh, we just upgraded to the 19 version, and I didn't bother keeping all the stats. Uh, I'm not too worried about them. So I have a few stats from a few days ago, but we don't keep a lot of high-density stats. Um, that's a whole topic for a different discussion. But the point is that these systems are working wonderful. And as far as planning goes, putting these little LRs in all those small rooms as opposed to hoping when they go in the bar. And let me kind of give you an idea. I'm going to talk about right here's that bar area. You're looking out through a wall and there's a wall here. And then it goes around this bar kind of wraps around where some of the pool tables are. Well, there is a series of walls in between. And maybe there is some range to reach the upper ceiling because there's a big transition from this ceiling to that ceiling. So there's a big density. There's actually a uh, series of offices that are above this in that gap. So you have a lot of things blocking the Wi-Fi. This is why we opted to go with a series of ACLRs in the bar area so there's not any connection issues. And this is something that a heat, plant, heat map may not have told you. So you wouldn't be able to see because you're dealing with elevation changes as well as walls and things like that in there. So that's one of the reasons with Unify, our plan is always to go with more Wi-Fi and put more less expensive devices in these areas that you know you're not going to have a ton of users, but you still want to make sure they have good connectivity in each of these. At least it's hard to get the perspective for the transition change, uh, but you can tell there's how tall the ceiling is versus how tall the ceiling is in a bar. Um, then over here, this is another, the ceilings are interesting because of the way they put some of the lights in and same with some of these facades and things like that. So that's where all that we kind of peppered around, I guess you could say, all these different APC um, LRs are smaller, they're low cost, but once they have all that in, they have excellent coverage in all these party rooms. Now, this gives you an idea of some of the bandwidth and some, some of the things they're being used for. And I also talk about the firewall and we're gonna break it down to system states and then we're going to go system processor update and this is over the last three months what i wanted to highlight here is yes this is a 500 meg circuit and this happens to be an sg3100 running it they're not running intrusion detection not part of scope of work not something they're interested in at all they do not want to filter or monitor any of those users the only thing we really have set up in this starts at the unify side we did set up guest rules so there's full guest isolation the guest ne network's very large in terms of scope but we did set it up so each guest up and down only gets two meg this kind of limits just how much bandwidth they can pull and leaves bandwidth for everything else so we do have some traffic shaping going on and the sg3100 can handle that but because it doesn't do any type of deep packet inspection the sg3100 still works for this particular use case now firewalls one of the things that people don't always get is that you really want to look at their ability to handle states so when a system has a connection for each IP address, each device that connects. There's gonna be assigned an IP address, but that system's gonna reach out and make a lot of different connections. You know, people have 20 tabs open in their browsers, people have a lot of applications on their phones. Those applications, each connection they have outbound is another state. And one website may have a few states or quite a few states because of all the different servers it connects to. So the firewall has to keep track of all those state tables. And that's one of the reasons I brought up so here is when they had, you know, high users. This is a few days ago they had an event, and you have all these users, you know, about six, 700 users on there. And here's what was going on with the firewall. So in terms of how many states was that? About 4,000 states. Not 4,000 IP addresses, but 4,000 states. So IP addresses and every connection that those IP addresses made. But what did that do to the uh, SG3100, and can it handle that capacity? Yeah, you look at the... Filter states, uh, let's actually pull up here system, and we're looking at the processor for the same time period. We'll just change this one, make it a little cleaner. Change this to none, change this to processor. So you can see this 4,000 states right here. Update, never breaks idle. So here's the average, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 133 processes peaked. It, it just barely moves a little bit right here when they had that peak time. But that's one of my points, that the SG3100, can it handle it? Absolutely. It's not a problem for it to be able to handle that much traffic, that much uh, packets. And we'll actually switch it to packets here. So here's some of those peaks. And like I said, those 
over 4,000 state tables when it peaked right there. But when you look at the processor, which is this green line here, you can see it can handle that perfectly fine. This question comes up a lot of whether or not I need to build some incredibly high-end PF Sense box to be able to handle 400, 500, 600 connections, um, 600 people on a wireless network. It As long as you're not having a need to run all the IDS, intrusion detection, everything else, you're good. It will it will handle that many connections. That's part of the other reason I wanted to make this video is to talk about what we're doing to planning. Can you use that firewall for it? Absolutely, it works great. It's not even breaking a sweat. But if you have a need to do IDS intrusion detection in the full gamut of you know DPI and logging, well then you're going to need something a little bit heavier. Those are the tools that take up more. Just managing this many connections and uh, passing traffic and doing the filtering. That actually is handled really well here. So hopefully it's offered you a little insight into some of the jobs, um, some of the planning that went into it. It's really more hands-on. It's not magic where you can just say, oh, I just plug this software and I, I draw the building and it just knows. You can't tell what's in the walls, especially of a, a building that was built several times and remodeled several times. That can be challenging, so bringing the Wi-Fi out helps that a lot. And when it comes to the capacity, as long as, depending on the use case, as long as they don't really have a need for things like, you know, full deep packing inspection and filtering, mostly they go, hey, we want a guest network that will support a lot of users. You don't need the fastest, biggest fire to be able to do this when it comes to PF Sense, you can do this, for example, with an SG3100. And like I said, this is a symmetrical 500 by 500 fiber connection that they have here. And uh, the project's gone really well, the customer's really happy, and that's what this follow up is. Three months after we installed it, this is what it looks like. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.